Okay, Chris. So, um, as the instrument switched on, you can see one of the functions on this is wizards. Wizards yep. is a simple way for us to um, open up functions and allow you to program the system in a much more straightforward uh, SOP format. You know, otherwise yep. it's given us a, a workflow. Yes, exactly yeah. that. So, if I actually um, go into wizards, it will open up the functions that we have available to us in the system. Yep. And one of those uh, you can see on there is dilution. Okay. Um, let's actually work through the process and we can see that in operation. So if I yeah. actually open dilution. You're going to take me through the options here? Yes, I think what yep. we can do is actually see how it goes. Initially the pump itself will initialize, that means it's actually zero in the drives. And the screen itself shows you a real time uh, option of what's going on. We have the screen showing the left and the right hand drives, this being a diluent and this being our sample. Yeah. And these are active valves, so it will actually sample from our reagent reservoir and that which may be a buffer, maybe an organic. Um, but all this is uh, irrelevant because this is a, a totally inert fluid line. This is FEP tubing and this is borosilicate glass with a, a PTFE tip. And this whole drive inside here is PTFE, so an inert fluid line. Yeah. So we have the ability here to make a simple sample dilution um, it's actually showing on a default here of um, a sample of uh, 1,000 microliters and then diluting that to, um, to uh, 4 mils, actually giving us a 1 in, uh, to 4 dilution ratio here. So I can easily change that by selecting a sample here. If I wanted to put a 500 microliter sample maybe, yeah. I can just enter that here. And now I can actually input the uh, volume I wish to, uh, to have as a diluent. And now that's actually put into the display. And here we can see we have a, a diluent volume of uh, 4,500 microliters with uh, 500 microliters uh, of sample, giving us a ratio of 1 to 9. And then we have an air gap uh, in terms of the um, space between the sample uh, in the tube, which is uh, shown as 10 microliters. This volume can be changed. So there's no, no reaction, no mixing in the tubing? That's exactly it. And we can change that relevant to the volumes that we're aspirating. Mm -hmm. So if I start this, you can see that the green arrow is actually showing that's our next step. It's ready to aspirate the diluent. Yeah. So when I press the button, actually you will see that we're going to pick up the diluent. And automatically, as you can see in the tip here, it's taken up now 10 microliters of um, air. And that's actually pulled through. And now from that, I can actually pick up my sample. So if I'm aspirating here 500 microliters, and we can adjust the length of this probe by just running the tubing line through appropriately, we can actually aspirate a sample here. So what I would actually do is actually adjust this length of yes. samples in future. And before I start, with, let's do that. It's very easy to do it in situ, because all I'm doing is sliding that through yep. the tubing line here. Now I have a longer length and I can take it actually to my other side. So now, as I can see, I can sample through. Yep. And we've aspirated our sample. Yep. Now on the next stage you can see it's actually showing the next action is for a 500 microliters and a 4,500 microliters, yep. including the air gap to go through. So we'll actually now dispense that into our new sample container. Yeah. Yep. And that was our 1 in 9 dilution. Yeah, very good. It's a very simple process. We've actually flushed through 100% of our sample with the diluent. So it's a very efficient way to do a dilution. In fact, Chris, um, we find that many people in labs are often doing pipetting functions where they are uh, pipetting a sample and adding an amount of reagent by a, a secondary pipetting step. This is essentially carrying this out in tasks. So yeah. we would use a reagent here which would Our be a system buffer. fluid. Exactly. Yeah. It could be a, a buffer, which includes of an internal standard or any material that you'd be pipetting, but it's actually allowing you to do that in a single step and push your sample over, ensuring that we get 100% recovery of our sample. Yeah. And of course, this is a positive displacement system. Yeah. So it does allow us and assure us that we're getting the highest level of accuracy realised in uh, that dilution step. So I wouldn't need to subsequently mix. With, with a ratio of uh, 1 to 9, um, subsequent mixing for most aqueous liquids, for example, not necessary. 
No, because we're just doing it in one step, that one that simple step. This is a kind of simple way to do it. We do have other ways to uh, prepare the same mix. Um, we've suggested here you've actually put in your sample volume and your diluent. We could, if we wished, actually um, decide on the ratio that we wish to yeah. make a diluent. Um, determine what the sample volume will be and it will calculate for us automatically yeah, yeah. the amount of reagent needed. So maybe if I look at that for yeah, you, show me that. show yeah. that's going. Yeah. So in the unit here you can see that we have um, on the banner a, an advanced program step. Advanced program steps addresses various things. We have the air gap mode which we're using at the moment. Yeah. Um, we also have something which is called a post air gap mode. Yeah. This is particularly relevant when we're sampling quite small volumes of sample. The re reason for that is if I'm aspirating a small amount of sample, let's say uh, volumes of around 20 microliters or so, um, the residue of material when I put that tip in actually could be on the outside of that. Yeah. Now if that's only a microliter or so, some people say, is that significant? Well, certainly mm. yes. Mm because taken as a percentage of your sample size, it could be significant. In normal pipetting techniques, we wouldn't wipe the tip for fear of actually pulling material away. But in this instance, what we can do is get the sample taken away from the tip, allowing us to wipe the tip after the uh, sample aspiration. So we'll look at that in this step at the moment. So I'm going to bring into the post air gap mode. I'm going to switch that on. It's very simple to do that. We just uh, look at the function and then we can switch that uh, figure here as trigger option. We have trigger and auto. The reason why I've selected trigger is because I want control of it. It yeah. will actuate from when I press the button, it will take the air gap up. So yeah. I'm going to put that in. That sounds like the safest option. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Because if I left it in auto function and I still had my probe in the sample, yeah. it wouldn't know that and actually aspirate. Yeah. So here it's the safest way to actually work with it. And we have the option here to put our post air gap volume. And we what, can what kind of volume typically? Say for a 20 microliter sample? I would normally only go for uh, something like anything under around 5 microliters is right. fine. Right. It just means to be enough to draw it up away from the tip uh, for us to wipe uh, the tip away. So we can actually enter that. So I'll enter that, and these are always shown in microliters here. So I'm yeah. entering 5 microliters. Um, I don't need any delay on it. The delay option is used when we've got the auto function. If somebody's aspirated sample, yes. it will give a delay and ultimately aspirate when we use that. We have other functions on this which we'll look at in a little while, but um, yep. which include uh, the wash mode. But here's one interesting thing. We're working on a fact type of dilution. There's two options of dilution and ratio. The factor type means that if I'm doing a ratio preparation of standard, 1 to 9 is 1 mil plus 9 mils gives us a total of 10. Yeah. If I'm working in dilution format, it's 1 and 10. In other words, a total of volume of 11 mils. But that's kind of essentially a difference. But this yeah, is an important difference. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we need to know where we are. And this is a, it gives us the option to select the ratio of dilution we prepared. The programming mode here, you can see, is very simple. We have dilute and sample. You remember on the front display we were given the option yeah. to put the sample volume and the diluent volume. Now in this we can actually select and work in a different format. So I'm going to work here in sample and factor. Yeah. This means I'm telling it the sample size I wish to take and the dilution ratio I want so to So I don't prepare. need to enter the diluent volume. Exactly. So right. it, it's, that, it's that moment when you don't have to do any calculations to uh, your um, dilution uh, that you're going to prepare. So if we accept that, then you can put our sample in. Um, yep. uh, if it's a relatively small sample, let's say I'm putting a, a small 25 microliter sample in, and I wish to put the ratio of dilution in here, I can have that, let's say, to a 1 in 200 dilution perhaps. Right, very easy. Yep. And you'll see when I've actually done that, it's actually you know, immediately calculated the yep. diluent volume. Perfect. Um, we have an air gap taken initially, and it's now obviously ready to go with the fill. So we can initiate this sequence. Okay, so Chris, um, you remember, okay, we set this uh, system up to allow us to take a 25 microliter sample, and we were taking yeah. a one in 200 dilution. So the first part of the uh, program is to aspirate the diluent here, which is 4,975, obviously, as we've set that. Yeah. And that's activated by the small um, button in front here. Yeah. So we can 
um, activate the first step, which actually will draw out our sample. Yeah. The next step actually is shown for the user, the arrow pointing down, it's showing 10 microliters. Um, this is the um, small uh, air gap that it's actually aspirated. And then we're going to pick up the uh, sample from that stage. So we're putting that in, a tip into the container and aspirating a small amount of our sample. Yep. Now, as I mentioned, with those small samples, we want to wipe the tip. But I don't wipe the tip for fear of actually drawing the yeah. sample out. So I've actually programmed a 5 microliter air gap, which by the next button press, yep. draws the sample slightly away from the tip. At that stage, I can now safely wipe the tip. Yeah. At that stage, now I can now do a dispense of our 1 in 200 dilution. Yeah. And you can see here. So your initial 25 microliters of sample yeah. has been dispensed under positive displacement along with 200 volumes of actually the um, diluent that's come over to produce our dilution. Yeah, and the uh, screen at all times tells us where we are in the process. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So that was a simple step. If yeah, we were good. repeating that, and we were doing a number of steps like this, I had a series of dilutions of that first sample, um, it's very easy for me to actually put refill on. So if I actually press this button now, okay. and I do exactly that same step, where we are aspirating our uh, volume, which actually will pick up. Yep. It's picked up our air gap, as we can see again, yep. and now I can aspirate a sample. Yep. Then the next air gap. My air gap's picked up, yep. I would say. Yep. And I can wipe the tip. Yep. And now I can safely dispense that into my container. But what will occur here is it will automatically aspirate the diluent for the next sample. So saving me that step and making it a slightly more efficient process. And so I can use my hands for the containers rather than programming the instrument. Exactly. Yeah. We're yeah. moving through that quite easily. And the, the way in which this is operated, this is a an ergonomic uh, designed uh, probe here where I'm holding that in a fairly neutral form. Yeah. You know, I'm to lift my arm up. Easy for me to target, as you noted, I can change the length of that probe simply yep. by moving it through the system, depending on the sample container I'm going to put that into. And because it's positive displacement, the angle you hold it at doesn't affect the volume, unlike an air displacement. That's air. exactly it. And if I was working with a tray, it's easy for me to aspirate and dispense. Yep. If I didn't need to add the air gap because the dilution ratio wasn't going to be so high, in other words, my sample was going to be somewhat higher, I may not need to have wiped the tip. Yeah. In this instance, when I'm doing small volumes, much easier for me that, to do that and prevent transfer of additional sample into my container. So a very easy way to actually yeah. work through. And as you noted, we didn't actually have to do replacement of tips because of that dispense action.